loading something. Like that. So we're here at uh, Adobe, and uh, you're working on making Flash work everywhere right now. That is the plan. Yes. Uh, obviously, right now. We're not showing Flash working everywhere. We're showing Flash working across a couple of some of the latest, um, latest phones. Uh, we have, for example, a, uh, a Nexus One right here. Uh, we also have over there uh, a Motorola Droid. Yeah. Um, and we do have a couple of Palm Prees. So, you know, basically showcasing um, some of the hottest new uh, phones running uh, Flash Player 10.1 and Air. So right there, this is movies.yahoo.com, and there's real flash. It's not fake, and no trick. You're, you're actually that's, doing full flash. That yes. is, yeah? yes, that is that is real flash. The same flash that you see on a browser, on your desktop, and your laptop. Yes. You get it full screen. What do you do? You just uh, double click it. Double click it. And there it is. And there it is. And uh, so this is the Nexus One. It's uh, based on the Qualcomm. The latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 1 gigahertz processor. Yes. And uh, so, how fast the processor do you need? And what do you think might be like? Uh, what is an officially announced? What, which, which devices for sure? Oh. Uh, should, should have the full, full flash. Well, we haven't. Uh, we've we've already sort of announced, obviously, uh, working with Google and Motorola. I mean, we announced some of this at Max. Uh, we're here actually now actually showing some of those devices running it. At Max, we just kind of showed them on stage. So finally here, we're kind of showing the devices in hand. Uh, we haven't made full announcements of all our partners yet. You know, we obviously working with a lot more. Uh, a lot of announcements are going to be coming out after, uh, some more after this. As far as what's going to be necessary, um, obviously we're working with some of the latest handsets. So it's, it's actually some of the newer generation processors. And some of the some of the new hardware, including some of the better um, uh, hardware acceleration support, um, we are currently still working very hard to get Flash Player to run uh, as well as possible on existing on, on as many well on as many devices as possible. Existing devices might be a little bit more difficult because we are trying to do full Flash Player 10 support. This is not a subset. Well, this is an existing device. That's true. The Nexus One is an existing device. So. Let me correct myself. Current, current, current devices. I, yeah. If you're talking about some of the older generation yeah. phones, um, it's not exactly what we're uh, what we're focusing on yeah. entirely. Because uh, we, what we want to do is we want to have parity. We want the same flash content that runs on a browser, right, to run on this device without having to change um, anything. Flash and HD videos. That is the plan. That is the plan. But so compared to, for example, playing a local HD file on the device, right? And and the, the, the hardware requirement of playing it in Flash, what is the difference there? Is there something you can say about that? If you can play HD file, is that good enough? Or you need uh, you need a lot of application processing at the same time or something like that, right? Well, well, it, oh, go for it. HD is very processor intensive, regardless of where it runs. Um, so, obviously, if you want to watch HD on a screen as small like this, you need a bit of process power. Um, again, regardless of where you watch it. So, uh, I'll just cut the video. So, we're still here at Adobe. Adobe. Yeah. Adobe. <laughs> and uh, you're showing the next version of Flash. This is the next version of Flash, yes. So, um, uh, what I really wanted to focus on here is our multi uh, multi target publishing uh, strategy going forward. So, as you've probably already seen, we have a lot of uh, devices now running Flash Player 10.1. Uh, we have some devices running Air. This is kind of an early early version um, showing right here. And of course, you've seen a little bit of our uh, iPhone publishing capabilities. So and it's not actually Flash on the iPhone. That is correct. That is not actually Flash on the iPhone. Uh, what we're doing is. We're converting a Flash project into a native iPhone application. So it's just one click from the Flash application, and you export to uh, to iPhone. Exactly, right. and, and not only to iPhone. It's one click to export to any one of the formats that we just mentioned. So if you look at a typical project, um, the, what defines Flash and what version of Flash is the publishing settings. So if you go to the publishing settings, you can see that if I wanted to publish for Flash in the browser, I just pick Flash Player 10. Now the great thing about Flash Player 10 is it's only one Flash Player 10. You notice it's not Flash Player 10 mobile or Flash Player 10 desktop. It's one Flash Player 10. It works 
everywhere that we say Flash Player 10 works. It's not Flash Player 10 Lite. No, it's no. Flash Player 10, correct. And then of course, if you want to go to Air as a standalone app, you just pick Air 2. So you export it to Air as well? Yeah, so as you can see, I can then say Adobe Air 2, and then this is just Adobe Air 2. Which will, in the, will include support for running it in, in, in the mobile version when that is released. And then the last step, as we mentioned, iPhone. You want to switch it, you want to actually publish it to the iPhone? You switch your publishing settings to the iPhone? That's it. That's it. Now, obviously, when you go to the iPhone, you do need one bit of information uh, from Apple, and this is you need your certificate, your P12 file, and your provisioning file. But once you have those two, you just say publish. And if you don't have them, you can uh, you can only test it on a, on, a, on a development iPhone or a jailbroken or something like that, right? No, actually, you would just test it right here inside of Flash. Yeah, while you're uh, waiting for your certificate. Well, that's right, while you're waiting for your certificate to come out. So, once again, the, 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 the point here is allowing someone to create one application, one set of assets, yeah. and with minimal work, and I say minimal because sometimes you do want to change some functionality between, for example, what's running in the browser and what's running outside the browser. But with minimal change, without having to redo the assets, you can now go from Flash 10 in the browser, the Air outside of the browser, the iPhone, very, very quickly across all the phones and devices that you see here in this booth. How about uh, the possibilities in, in Flash uh, in terms of making very complex applications and stuff like that? What could you say about when you? Would you say that you can do anything in Flash, or the limits, and what are those limits compared to other types of make, you know, making applications in some other ways? You know, every time I think there's something we cannot do in Flash, the community proves me wrong. So I'm, I, I have stopped saying that we can do something in Flash. However, um, obviously, because of the performance in some of these devices, there are some things you may not want to start off doing that, you, that will work, for example, on a desktop. You, that doesn't mean you necessarily want to do that on the phone. So there are some optimization guidelines that you should, you know, try to stick with to make sure that the content runs as nicely as possible on the phone. But as the technology gets better and the phones get faster, a lot of those limitations are going to be going away as well. Is there anything like uh, when you have Flash Player 9 content on the internet, right? Flash 9 content. Uh, one of the, maybe the last couple of years of Flash 9 content that has maybe been like extra complicated, uh, extra, like uh, extra features and a lot of animations right. everywhere. Is there any like, is it is Flash Player 10 going to be 100% backwards compatible on all the devices? Or are there like some backwards compatibility issues? No, the, the, the strategy for the Flash Player team, and this is why it's so difficult sometimes to do what they do, is to always make it backwards compatible. So when we say Flash Player 10, what we're saying is that it's going to play not only Flash Player 10 content, but it's going to play Flash Player 9, 8, 7, 6, as far back as we can test it on. And that's always been the mantra of the team, is to keep it backwards compatible, to make sure that we don't break content that's already existing on the internet. But you add some kind of uh, interface or uh, double tap on a video, it always goes full screen, no matter how the Flash is made, or is it has to be like... Well, is we, that an extra thing? Or? And, and that's actually, our click to play is one of the mobile strategies. So mobile player um, is going to allow you to have click to play, on, on, especially when you have multiple Swifts running in the page. Video is a little bit different because video, we can recognize video and make sure that when you double tap on the video, it actually expands full screen. So there are some things that we can recognize appropriately yeah. and other things you will have to programmatically add into yeah. the code to make sure that that works um, for mobile content. So you will always recognize video. There's not like some uh, very hidden video somehow inside of the Flash. It's, it's always recognizable. Because we know our video, right? Yeah. Flash knows its video, so it's easy for us to be able to rec recognize our video. But there's many different ways to make video in Flash, no? There's the YouTube way and there's the Hulu way. Or is it different or...? Well, at the end of the day, you're still rendering video through our codec inside yeah. the player so the player can recognize. However, obviously for best practices, we're probably going to encourage people to, if you want certain video to behave a certain way in mobile, that you actually program it, that you, you know, design it to do that. So, that so it, a guideline somehow. Ab ab absolutely. Yeah. So uh, to make all this flash work on all these devices has been a huge job, right? And uh, can you explain uh, what's, what, how many people are working on this? I mean, who is well, like, what I can tell you, it's the Flash Player team is, is a large team that has been working very, very hard. Um, through a lot of through a lot of weekends to try to achieve what is 
almost an impossible job, which is yeah. consistency and performance across not just one phone, but across a whole set of phones. Um, and as you can see from the demos we have here, um, they're delivering on that promise. So um, it's only yes. the last couple of years, no, that has been uh, that kind of goal at, at the door. Well, the, the goal, I think the goal's always been there. We've always, seen that. we've always wanted, achieving that goal was very difficult. We didn't quite know how to achieve that goal. Flashlight was the first attempt to try to get mobile. The problem is that parity was almost impossible with the performance of those phones. As the phones got better and we started to see, wow, we can now truly do, um, you know, we do have the ability to have Flash Player 10, have parity yeah. across all these devices. Uh, as you can see, we can now deliver on that final vision, which was, the, the vision's always been create one Swift and run it in as many places as possible. Um, we're not quite there yet. You know, we're not quite to the days where it's one one Swift guaranteed to run across everywhere. Yeah. But I think we're to the point where one project can very quickly run across a variety of devices with very little work. It's just one click. That's one solution. It's. You know, it's, it's, as, it's as close to one click. If I, if I may ask about uh, all these bloggers, you know Robert Scoble and these, these, these bloggers who, are, who like Apple a lot, and they're saying that there, there is anything to do with, uh, 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 what's it called, uh, that the hardware is not powerful enough to run Flash. What would you say about that? Is, it is, is, should it be powerful enough? Is it, it's another decision, right? It's, it's about content and business or it's something else. It's not well, the, I understand a lot of the business yeah. decisions why a company can choose to, to include or not to include Flash. I, won't, I can't comment on what they perceive to be uh, good enough. All I can comment on is what we can deliver on our existing uh, handsets that we are partnering with. So if you look at uh, Motorola, if you look at uh, Nexus One from Google, if you look at um, Palm Pre, we are delivering on those devices. So I, at that point, I'll just let you know, yeah. let the consumers decide whether it runs well enough. But you're prom promising that it's going to be like full Flash 10, full. That's the promise. I mean, it's really full. it's not a gu guarantee, but it's kind of guarantee, no? We it's want it there. We want it to be full Flash 10. That's correct. Cool. Okay. Thanks a lot. Ah, Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks.